to uh, both of them to continue and we have uh, uh, two more uh, sessions related to the same subject now i'll request dr vimlesh rana to come here he basically started his career as a transfusion specialist but he has lots of new in the field of molecular genetics mujhe malum hai ki molecular genetics ko dekh ke bahut sare logon ko lag raha hai ki ye hamare subject kaam ka nahi hai but i'll request this is one subject jo aap sab logon ko because now this science has established in the country you should definitely listen to his lecture i request dr kaveri to continue hello 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 thank you invite i invite dr nilesh rana to start uh, uh my name is vimarsh rana uh and uh, i am first of all thankful to dr agarwal who has uh, asked me to come here and speak to you all uh all of us uh, have got into medicine because one of the other reason and uh, since he said that topic is tough i would start with a small story uh most of us uh may not have read that story how many of people you would have read the story who moved my cheese anybody who has read that story okay i'll uh, tell you a small story but i'm assuring you that i'll finish in time so don't worry uh this uh, is a book which is around 50 pages and anybody who reads this story can be a good genetics thank you uh this is uh, the story of two small mice uh sniff and scurvy and two small men ham and hog this story talks about these four individuals and they would every day wear their sneakers and go for jogging and when they would jog they would go into a maze and after a couple of days these people discovered some cheese there and the mice began to nibble on it it tasted good so they said why don't we have some cheese and when these two young smart human beings went there they also nibbled some cheese and they tasted it and it felt good and all of them thought this belongs to them every day they would jog to that place eat cheese and come back since human beings are intelligent they said we don't need the jogging shoes we don't need the track suit they gave it up and they put a board there and they said this cheese belongs to us mice were very simple so they just nibbled the cheese every day they didn't give up their shoes till one fine day the cheese was no longer there and the human beings got very annoyed he said they said somebody has moved our cheese and they kept on cribbing and while the mice you know they just went ahead and looked for more cheese somewhere else so like cheese our medical profession is also changing and it's changing constantly and lot of doctors you will have feeling threatened they say okay uh, this was valid last year but it is not valid now so similarly medical genetics and biotechnologists will come into hospitals in next 5 to 7 years i work in a lab coincidentally i am a pathologist and i'm senior to them but five of my colleagues are no longer mbbs people they are scientists and they are working in the hospital and they control the show and in the coming days there will be more and more of these people who will be entering the health services and unless we learn and we understand how to handle molecular genetics we will not be able to deliver there was a time when people used to decide treatment on basis of young gain then faith cup and then there there was an era where people used to treat on basis of symptoms and signs when our professors were there they used to just use the stethoscope and that's it then came an era where there were radiological investigations i think when we did pathology the ultimate thing was to do a histopathology and now over a period of time things have changed uh this is around 150 years back this is what our stetho looked like and look what it looks like now so things have changing and medicine is evolving from the stetho it is moved to the molecular structures and from there things have changed in this picture you can see a physician treating a human being and this is just 200 years back it is a qualified physician the person in the center was mad and 200 years back this was the most respected physician of his time and they put a lamb on his one side and they made made the lamb to bleed and 
put that blood into this human being to remove his madness. And every uh, disease is inherited. Just Dr. Subramanian was saying about azospermia. Tons and tons of diseases over a period of time we are realizing are inherited. Now there are stories that diabetes is inherited, hypertension is inherited and soon you will have lot of your reports who will have these, which will have these terminologies in place. Uh, what do you want? Lights to be off? I don't have the control. It's not clear? So, over a period of time you will see that lots of our reports earlier would say TLC is this. Now they will say, you know, the test has been done on fluid sentence to hybridization or things like that. Okay. So, uh, these are the terminologies which will be there in our reports. And it is high time that we understand these terminologies. And you will have things like gene mapping, you will have things like PCR written on them. And no longer your reports may sound like that, they will have languages like these written. And we need to understand them. Uh, there is a paradigm shift in the way we diagnose and treat people. Uh, every second patient is surfing the internet, he is coming up with some information on the net. And some way he is wanting you to help him in understanding his disease. To give you a background, just because when we were in medical school, most probably most of us did not do molecular biology. So I'll just brush some information. This is what a cell is made up of. And each cell, which for a lymphocyte may be just 7 to 10 microns in size, each cell has some amount of DNA in it. And we spread this DNA, this will be more than around 2 meters in each cell. And all of us, each one of us would have around 100 trillion cells. And uh, most of his DNA is made up of just four components, adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine. Now, genetically most of us are similar. And this is the level of similarity we have with a chimpanzee. And still, we are so different than each other. Between human beings, we are just one base pair different between two human beings, one in 500 base pairs. And that is what makes us different. So, amongst medical professionals, the future is bright for those of us who understand that the cheese is moving. Uh, long, long back, you know, out of... Uh, Molecular genetics, I am focusing myself on just two aspects of molecular genetics, how it helps us uh, in diagnosing or assisting uh, pregnant females and in diagnosing and prognosticating and treating cancer patients. Long, long back if some cancer was benign, we would be happy in differentiating it from a benign to a malignant one. Then came an era where the cancer used to be classified, they said AML, CML, that's fine. Then now people want to understand it in more depth. So these were the established technologies, say around 10 years back. But now if you have a cancer patient who has a good histopathology report, who has a good routine hematology report, you might not be feeling just happy about it. So you would need an immunophenotyping, you would need some immunological markers and then only you would be able to properly diagnose and monitor this patient. So, some of the newer technologies in diagnostics include proteomics, genomics, molecular biology and conventional cytogenetics and molecular cytogenetics. And in Delhi, I think cytogenetics is available at three places, at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, at Gangaram Hospital and at Apollo Hospital. But as time evolves, more and more places will have to have cytogenetics and molecular cytogenetics available. I would, these are the various 